a warm welcome to our studio empowerment session, a program that was established to empower saints and equip them with knowledge and solutions on how to deal with issues that affect us in our daily lives, in our personal lives, be it at school, at work, at home, at church, as we fellowship with each other, at our workplaces, at our businesses, even in the communities and societies that we come from. A program that is broadcasted here at the Lost Sanctuary Church every Sunday morning uh, between uh, 8.50 to 9.30. Um, and on today's program, um, our guest is somebody who has been on the program before, uh, a man who needs no introduction at all. Um, uh, he's a, mathematics, a, a mathematician by profession. He's a guru in maths, um, and he was once on this program to discuss the importance of mathematics in our daily lives. Mr. Amazon, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mr. Sikwe, for having me. <laughs> Before we even uh, get straight into it, please allow me to uh, thank our senior pastors uh, for giving us uh, this platform, a platform to discuss issues that we deal with every day in our lives, uh, pertinent issues that we face as we try to develop ourselves in our personal lives, in our, capacity, our personal capacities, for giving us such a what seat, you know, to share experiences of the things that we have learned in our lives as we try to progress in life. Thank you so much, our pastors, and uh, thank you for giving us such a, such a platform. Also, allow me to welcome our online audience and appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you can like uh, and share and repost this discussion so that your relatives, your friends, and colleagues can also be blessed by this, uh, by this discussion. You can also participate with us uh, by commenting and sending through your questions on the comment section uh, so that you may entertain them uh, before the program starts. Um, just to give you um, more context into why this program was established, um, so as a church through the leadership of our senior pastors, we have always wanted to to have the studio empowerment sessions, even way before COVID struck. And uh, just a few months ago, we had an opportunity to launch this program, um, you know, um, the studio empowerment session, so that we empower our saints. Empowerment in the sense that we are creating a dynamic form of participation for the members of the Lord Sanctuary Church. And we'll be looking at uh, topics of relevance in life that are normally not discussed in our sermons, be it on our Wednesday services, on our Sunday services. The issues that we discuss here are not normally covered in those, uh, in those sessions. We are equipping our church members with general knowledge and solutions and make them wise as well as creating a platform uh, for business synergies. This is really the reason why uh, this program was created, was formed, and we would like to thank you so much you know, for being part of this journey. We have had so much uh, of discussions uh, previ in previous sessions. A lot of topics were covered, topics to do with your health and hygiene, topics to do with how to start business without capital, uh, topics to do with um, entrepreneurship, personal branding, you know, were also covered. So you can as well go back to our, our previous sessions on our Facebook page, that is a uh, Stanley Nevera Facebook page, and uh, be blessed by the sessions we have, uh, we have had before. Mr. Mzondo, welcome to the program. Like I said before, we appreciate your presence. And um, on, the, on the previous uh, session that you were here, you were discussing on the importance of mathematics in life and in decision making, uh, ETC. So today I want to take it a bit deeper you know, and discuss the issues to do with, uh, with uh, probability theory. And our topic today is uh, the relevance of probability theory in mathematics. And my first question to you is that um, the theory behind probability has real world implications. And one can use the, these ideas uh, behind probability to inform their decisions in life. Using probability, one can also measure the expected value of the various decisions in life. Can you possibly tell us uh, more about what probability is and how it impacts our daily lives and business, especially in decision making? Thank you, Mr. Sikwe. Uh, uh, probability is one of the <coughs> theories we study. I think we meet it early. Uh, it's introduced in the early part of uh, secondary school. Basically, when we're talking of probability, we're just talking about the likelihoodness of an event to occur. So it's quantified in terms of we normally assign, we actually assign a value zero for something that will not happen and a value one for a certainty. So everything else is in between uh, 
that range. So obviously, if the value is close at one, that, that thing is likely, very likely to happen. Having said that, it doesn't mean if something is, is, a, is a value close to zero, we are saying it's unlikely to happen, but can happen. And mm. now looking at life, this is where people fall for it because you might find something as a low probability. Like I said, it doesn't imply it's not going to happen. But we are just saying is what do we expect to ha in a long range if you are going to be playing around in that zone. Mm -hmm. Now it brings me to something which was discussed I think two or three weeks ago here. Uh, I think it was my wife here mm -hmm. on, and um, Dikon Maramba asked a, a question on gambling. Mm -hmm. She said, "Can someone live on gambling and um, as a way of maybe saving to actually?" Because there are career gamblers in the mm. world, and mm. can I choose that path? <laughs> As a profession. As a profession, yeah. and what should motivate me to make that decision? What is gambling? What, what really happens in that whole scope? Mm. So it, 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 when I was listening to her, well, with my background, I was looking at what we call game theory. Mm -hmm. So, which is part of what people don't know, which happens behind the scenes that... Uh, when you look at all those sorts of games, be it your, the ones we find in casinos and, and of late we have people soccer betting mm -hmm. and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. These are not just put there randomly. There are actually some theoretical background behind them where calculations are made and someone can predict their income mm -hmm. even before the year ends. They know how much they are going to get from it. Okay. And it's all based on probability. So I, I was just going to make an illustration. Um, you can help me, Mister. Um, one of the games people love in casinos is the is the roulette. Uh, uh, if you can see <coughs> what we have on the screen there, this right. is a typical game people play in the casinos, where you you be having your chips, which is literally your money. You mm -hmm. go to the counter, you give them the normal cash. They give you some chips, some round things which you place, so what you have here are numbers 1 to 36. They are not put in the order as 1 to 3. They are randomly kind of put in there. Right. And this is the wheel, basically. So it will, when time to play comes, um, mm -hmm. ideally a player chooses a number. But what I want to so you're going to select, there, there will be a ball which will go around and settle in a particular slot. Right. Right. So I can select 34. So I'm guessing that when this happens, the ball is going to rest in position 34. Right. Right? Right. So immediately we can say, what are the chances of doing that? So we can, that's what you can already see there is probability coming in there immediately. What are the chances of, we are assuming it's random. Look, I'm using the word random. I hope we appreciate what that means. Is we are talking of something which is uh, happening fairly, every number can show. Right. They, they are all equally likely to show. Right. So if with that in mind, if it's going to happen randomly, the chance of, since there are 36 slots, the chance of it falling in a particular slot is 1 out of 36. Right. So in essence, that is your probability of winning. But when you look at the flip side, because... Let's say I'm the owner of the machine. Right. You are playing against me. That's what you realize. There's someone behind the scenes you are not seeing. There is you there playing the game, and there is someone you are playing against. Right. So your probability of winning is one out, one out of 36. My probability, the owner of the machine, right. 35. <laughs> 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 now, how do they tempt us? Uh, they will tell you, obviously, if you put... Maybe a dollar, they'll give you five. Right. So that's the tempting part of it. So it's not like we are going one-to-one. -one. They'll give you more money. But like I said, this is not randomly decided. When they actually decide how much they're going to pay for something, it's well calculated. Right. We, in, in statistics, you, you said, you, you mentioned the word expected. Right. There is a value we calculate which roughly I can call the mean in statistical terms, we call it expectation. Mm. So 
when you're designing a game, you actually, I'll look at, okay, so the way I've put it is, you, let's say with the figures I've mentioned, if you put a dollar, right. we give you five. Right. So in essence, you have one, four dollars. Right. right. Yes. Or whatever is going on there. Mm. Or otherwise, you lose one dollar. That is right. the opposite happens. Mm. So if you put that, in, that information in, the, in a statistic or look at the distribution of what's going on. So mm -hmm. this is a very small distribution because literally it's got only two numbers. Right. Your win, what you win, the probability of you winning what, that sum of money you're going to win, what you can lose and the probability of that happening. If we work out the expectation, expectation which is literally the amount, for each game we're now saying what is the expected amount mm -hmm. that you are going to win. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you calculate it, you're going to realize it's negative. Right. <laughs> so we can actually fine-tune it to the figure that so the owner of the machine can from that can calculate and see that this is the amount which a player loses or what he gains per game. Right. And then from that, depending on the number of games that are going to be played, they can actually do their books. Right. Now, I've mentioned that while there's a low probability, like is in this case, let me just put that aside. Of course, they normally in a normal game, they, there are so many options. You don't necessarily just select the number. You can actually go separate. So what I put here is what will be in front of you. So, so if you go to a table, All right. you will be first, you will be having that table there with numbers. That's your will there, the, 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 that's going to change. Now, you've got options of playing colors. So long, it's going to fall into red rather than going for numbers. So all those options, okay. but still, but that doesn't pay. Right. It's not very attractive. Right. Um, going for such options, you can also go for an option where you are saying four and five. So if you have seen it on, in movies, you can see someone putting a slot in between numbers. So I can put it between thirty-four and thirty-five. So I'm going for two numbers again. It doesn't pay as much as going for a particular number. Right. But all that is factored in. When they do their calculations, they win. Right. Yes, a random person can win a game in the process. Maybe are all there, as if, and that's that one person. That's going to happen. They've factored that in already. Overally, they win. Right. So none of these games are fair in terms of they are fair. Mm. Well, that they are being played. Mm. The ball is rolling. You are watching it. Mm. It does go in there. But the fairness in terms of is me and the owner of the machine right. having equal probabilities? No. Yes. <laughs> right. So they even so there are several games. They are all tuned in that same. I think we used to have lot. I don't know whether it's mm, still it's exists. Still there, it's still there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's played on the same line because you also have like they've even increased them. I know when it started in Zimbabwe, we we're playing around with around thirty six numbers. Mm. I think they've upped it, they eventually upped it to around 40 something, 42 I think. And you're supposed to select six numbers mm -hmm. from that. Um, let's try and get like that. Right. Yes. Now, what you want to look at is, it falls in a world of mathematics which you call combinatorics, where you are looking at combinations. Right. So, what you're looking at is, if I'm going to pick six numbers mm. out of 36, mm. how many combinations mm. do I have? How many different sets mm. of six numbers that can come out? Because that's what you're not seeing there. Mm. Mm. Uh, let me do that. Sounds complicated already, isn't it? <laughs> right. So if I've if I'm playing with 36 numbers and I want to select six numbers, right. uh, the number of different six numbers that I can select from that is 1,947,792. Right. So which means the probability of you picking a particular six number which is going to win is one out of 1 million. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, let me just round it to 2 million. <laughs> right. Which is it's very close mm. to zero. Mm. But we are talking of Zimbabwe here. Mm. They upped it to 42. 
42 million. No, no. Uh-huh. Numbers. Two numbers. <laughs> I was I was going to be shocked by that to say <laughs> from 1 billion to 46 million. <laughs> by upping it to 42 numbers. Right. Then we now have 5 million uh-huh. 245,786. So these are the number of different six numbers you mm. can come up with. So if you said, I want to play as many as possible, mm. I don't know how far you can go. Mm. Because for you to then play all the five million different kinds, for you to mm. be certain I'm going to win, then I can play everything. So I can go with my money, play all the six, five million. It's literally impossible. It's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how much money you would use to achieve that mm. and what is the value of the prize money on offer anyway. Mm. So the game, by actually increasing the numbers, is being designed to be even more difficult, making it more impossible mm. for you to win, mm. but making it more possible for the owner of the game to win. Yes. So it's, it's designed to take your money. Full stop. Full stop. Mm. Right. So you could look at all the other games. You uh-huh. see they are just along the same lines. You look at, like, in the casinos, they all have the fruit machines. It's the same thing. It's even more complicated uh-huh. because you then have different windows. Different things are happening on different windows. And you are supposed to give a match the probability of that happening. Uh-huh. It's around the same thing here. One is to over five million, something like that. It's uh-huh. these things... The unfortunate thing is maybe when you walk in, you do see people win. One or two random, it, it does happen. It does like happen. I said, yes, as yes. long as the probability is not zero, mm. it is possible to, to, to achieve that. But long term, we're talking about, can I make a career out of it? When mm. A career is not a one-day visit mm. to, 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 to the casino, whether mm. to play blackjack or whatever mm. you are looking at playing. It is a weekly thing where you are known to, you know, it reminds me, I was telling my wife, I think last year, we had a colleague leaving the country and we decided to say, okay, let's spend some time with him on our last day of work. Right. Have some drinks, mm. a meal, and then just say a goodbye, mm. share a few jokes. What I didn't know is this was one of his favorites. So we were at some uh, eating place, street drop at uh, mm. Louisam. Mm. There's some hidden place, it's mainly... Mm white environment mm. in the back there so he then says ah he, he found it the what we're doing so boring just having the drinks and right. he says <laughs> why don't we go across to shangri-la mm. next to shangri-la is a casino so we mm. said okay let's go and see what happens there mm. so we went we actually tempted to say maybe i can just play one two games just mm. but before we did he changed i think about 200 bucks Mm. and played blackjack. Right. Within a minute, right. it was gone. Right. And all of us just left. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and mm. it was shocking mm. because it didn't put him off. We left him there. Right. So these things are actually addictive. Yes, just, yes. Yeah. I, I wanted to, to, to touch on that. On, on how, you know, uh, uh, the issue of addiction really falls into place into this whole into this whole thing of probability because i've seen many people uh, who who go for soccer baiting these casinos they keep going there they keep going back no matter how many times they don't win they always go there i was having a discussion i think around the period where the, the world cup uh, you know season there was this guy who came on in, uh, on attachment just for a few a few few weeks at our workplace and he was telling me that um he actually has an application on his phone, you know, for soccer betting. And he was telling me of a guy, like what you're saying, that some people win, of a guy who bought a house in Mavuku and a car, you know. And the other time, the guy sold the car so that he, what, he gets the money to, you know, to go. Why, why, why do people always go back there in terms of addiction? Is it controllable? Do you get to a point where you say, okay, fine, I'm done. I've had this before, I've, I've had this so many times, I've lost money, or at a point you say, I've won big time this time around, let me stop. Is it possible? It is possible, but it's some, in some cases, you actually need to bring in our man of God, you need help. Mm. Mm. Yes, because uh, it needs, in some quarters, you actually need prop therapy where you go to a psychologist to actually get help. Mm. It's a serious thing. What, what happens on a day thing, 
is like if I went in with um, let's say fifty dollars, right. and I've I mean I've played maybe now forty is gone. There is this sense. Let me just play to just get back right. my fifty. That's normally the initial thought. Right. So it's not like you lose the money. All of it is just going. Usually, if you're playing a game like the one we had there, mm. a little here and there it comes. Something comes back. You are like close, getting close to your initial figure, and you are just saying, "Let me just get my fifty and get out of here." Right. <laughs> but mm. what then happens is it goes. Right. It's the fifty is gone. Mm. What decision is does one make mm. when they've lost? They went with fifty dollars. It's not like that. It's, it becomes dangerous if it's that not the only amount of money. I think those who are slightly disciplined probably know the cap to say, "Well, I know what will happen when I get in there. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to just do it for fun, which is like what most people do when they go for holidays, right. they've put these things in where we live in the hotels. Mm -hmm. So obviously, it's one of the entertainment at the mm -hmm. hotel. Mm -hmm. So you could just do it for fun. If you're going to do it for fun, mm -hmm. you make sure you leave your room." If it's twenty dollars you want to play, let it be the only amount of money on you, mm. because mm. that wanting to get your money back will come in. Exactly. And in trying to do it, you're, right. you're going to take out another twenty, right. <laughs> so that I can win and get my money back. Then the twenty goes. You right. actually now want back your forty. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Before you know it, you have lost a lot of money. Exactly. And then the addiction does not come from losing like that, right. because that small chance exists. One day, you will something will happen. Big money comes, and you find oh this thing pays. Right, that's the sense. Mm. That so, the more I try, because mm. I won once, I might it might happen again. Exactly. Imagine yeah. we, we we see things on on TV countries like America, England, where they some of these things they deal with the big money. You hear someone won a lot of ticket. It was five hundred million. So you are like, oh, mm -hmm. what if I get that? It's life-changing. <laughs> but the chance of it happening right. to you, right. it might happen to someone else. Mm -hmm. Because you want to focus on you, not someone else. You're right. It's this small. It, you might spend your lifetime and it might never happen. You're right. And, but because maybe you won $50 one day, you think, uh, mm -hmm. I, I've got the luck. Mm -hmm. You then end up stuck there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it needs therapy. Right. Wow. Interesting. Uh, interesting. <laughs> you, have, you, have, you have touched on, on, on my, my, my second question when you addressed the issue to do with, um, you know, Lotto and, you know, how so many people have been so fortunate to win it and some have also failed to win it. And uh, you've also touched on, you know, on the owner of the machine having access, you know, at the back end to manipulate the system. Are there machines that have now been created, you know, to manipulate the systems around probability, seeing that all the other, you know, systems have been computerized? In, in my initial talk, I mentioned, I used the word random. Mm. When I was talking of randomness, I was saying when, when, if, when all things are fair. Mm. When, but with the computerization, which, is we, no, which we now have, right. imagine playing, let's, let's look at soccer. Mm -hmm. which is one of the games which mm -hmm. are people are putting their money towards. Right. Um, with soccer, they close before the game. Normally, most games, they, there's a cutoff at some point. Right. Because this is computerized, we now have algorithms which can then assess what has happened, mm -hmm. what way is the money, what are people saying. So that kind of data can, within, in a short space of time, can easily be analyzed. Mm -hmm. And you can see, oh, we have a game, Manchester United versus Arsenal. Yeah. Most people have said Arsenal is going to lose. Right. So which means if Arsenal loses, mm -hmm. we are going to lose money. Right. So the, the, because that's the money. The money is there already. People have put in their money. Mm -hmm. And you, you can even you, you can see it because we are in the computer age. You can even see the amount of money that has been put. You yeah. can even see it. Which is why you can now see that these games can actually be manipulated. Mm -hmm. Nothing then stops. So you can see if this happens, we are going to lose $20 billion. Right. It's, if I'm going to lose $20 billion because of a simple situation, what stops me from just giving the ref $1 million exactly. and tell them, 
we we Make want sure this game United to go this is, way is, mm. and now you have uh Williams crying about mm. some dubious Pain offside out. decision yeah, which has been allowed in. right <laughs> <laughs> and the ref is saying it's a goal right there, there are things happening behind the scenes because right. this is analyzed before so we know this we cannot allow this to happen mm. under no second if it means maybe you can allow the first half to go he knows what re decision that the people have said what is supposed to happen mm -hmm. if it means red cards will come out i think we saw it um a dubious game world cup i think was it america or whatever where cameroon mm. lost player after player mm. someone just walks onto the pitch red card <laughs> And you can see that this is not normal. Mm. This is dubious. Mm. You will reflect to a game, I think, was Manchester United and Manchester City. Dubious uh, offside I, I trying think, to I be think, justified. I think <laughs> <we> <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm talking to the wrong man here. <laughs> when, you, when you look at that, you can see that behind uh, the scenes, they, they, you could see the ref going to talk to the ref. No one knows what they were talking about. But you can sense this is not normal. <laughs> and people are at pains to justify, explain the rule. So I, I'll go back to even the lot, which yeah. I mentioned. Mm -hmm. People play numbers. Mm -hmm. The game gets stopped. Uh, the, the, the play stops before. Mm -hmm. Again, you can see that no one chose ball number six. Mm -hmm. or You can tell what was not played. No one inspects those balls mm. before they are played. If, if we don't want ball number five to show up, mm. what if you make you put a big one which mm. doesn't fit in that little one? Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the this is the real world. Right. Things are not what they seem. Yeah. It just takes to increase that ball by a radius of one millimeter or two. It won't fit that slot. Right. I'm I will be certain, come at me, spin them, that ball will never get in there. Because it doesn't fit in that wall. Right. Did you, you, you will see everything. It's going to be done. They right. try to be fair. Yeah. It's done live yeah. on TV. Yeah. Let's start. <coughs> ball number one drops in. Ball number two. And you, everyone sees that. But what you don't know is some of them cannot actually go through. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Um, our last question is our time uh, is, uh, you know, almost approaching to the end of the program. Um, mathematics is generally a, a, a difficult you know, subject to, to deal with for so many people. You know, I, I, was, I was watching, um, I came across a video on, 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 on TikTok. So this guy was, was, you know, was recording himself and was saying, I'm looking for, the, I'm looking for my high school teacher who said, uh, if I don't have mathematics, I will not go far in life. Where I'm looking for that for that guy, cause look here, I've gone. I'm I'm in Dubai right now. Eh? I've gone far. <laughs> which which left me to 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 think that you know what he's trying to say. Look, I was told that you need mathematics in life. You know, for you to be able to, you know, to do well in life, right? And um, why is it? It seems as if mathematics as a subject is very difficult to attempt especially in young children, even in adults um, as well. Is there anything, you know, is there anything that you are doing wrong in terms of approaching mathematics as a subject? Yeah, that's a very gray area. To be honest, um, it, it goes back to the theory of learning in, in terms of how does one learn? And th that's central to our understanding of this concept. And with it, that's where a lot of things go wrong. Mm. The teaching, I am sorry to say that, uh, is part of it. Mm. Um, at times, we, we as teachers of mathematics are not teaching it the way it needs to be taught because mm. we are not grounded here on the concept of the necessary learning theories consistent with mathematics education. There, there is, you, the, we have got general stuff which everyone knows, those theories of how people learn, but then right. we can send that to a specific subject like mathematics mm. and say, how should math how do you learn mathematics mm. and that's where the problem is right. and how do you teach it so that people can learn generally that we we have been very poor in terms of um, the teacher education 
And I blame, like, in our country, the primary school set up is, is part of the problem. Right. We, we, we don't have specialization. Mm -hmm. At a teacher training college in Zimbabwe, there is specialization. Right. But when it goes to the school, there isn't specialization. So if I was a primary school teacher, I would teach all subjects. Right. And yet a subject like mathematics, uh, pastor talks about active learning and things like that, which right. is what I, I was going to get into if there's time. Right. Because that's how you want to teach. Right. That's how you want to learn. We learn actively, not right. passively. Right. right. But for me to tailor made, make a, a, a topic so that I can engage students actively, I should have deeper understanding of that concept myself. Right. And if I'm not a subject specialist, that's something else. Right. I'm not, I do, if, I don't, if I'm not grounded enough in that right. subject, right. Um, chances I'm just reading facts and mm. telling them, then you cannot do that. You cannot invoke that mm. in a lesson to have that. Because what you want in a lesson right. is when we're talking of active, we are not talking of people physically moving and whatever. Right. We are talking of the, the activity goes to how your brain is engaged. Right. As you are thinking about what I'm talking about, as you are looking at it, you mm. are actively mm. participating. Right. A cognitive thing. We're mm. talking of cognition. Yeah. Mm. That's, where, that's the level where you want the activity to be, not on the hands and whatever. Right. So to, 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 to bring that out, I should be able to present uh, a, a, a topic uh, in a, such a way that I can engage. Right. Right. Two, the students, we also talk, in education, we also talk of metacognition. Right. Which is basically thinking about thinking or, 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 or learning to learn. <laughs> right. A students themselves need to know how to learn what they want to learn. Right. Right. I just want to go back to active learning just to give a simple illustration of things that we all appreciate. Right. Um, I always look at an example of um, when I was young, I would get an opportunity here and there to travel with my father, right. driving. Then it was all manual vehicles. Right. I thought, because I could see them driving, there's nothing complicated. You take a key, mm. put slot it into that hole, right. turn the cow start. Right. You shift the gears, and I'm watching. If I was to go to a planet where there are no cars, I could go and tell them we have got cars in Zimbabwe. Yeah, right. And this is how you drive a car. Mm. Because I thought I had understood the concept of driving mm. until one day. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> where I then took the seat mm. and started it. Fortunately, it, it did start. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened thereafter right. was shocking because that smooth thing that the old man was doing and the vehicle moving, mine was bouncing right. and things almost got out of hand. Right. And that's when I realized I had not learned anything. Yeah. And such is a subject like mathematics. Mm -hmm. When you observe someone doing things mm -hmm. is just as good as someone observing someone driving there right. or riding a bicycle. It's right. simple. You can see it. Mm. I can explain what's going I th all right. I think I've understood. Right. But when you get yourself there, mm. which is where I was talking about learning to learn, you now need to realize if I'm going to learn to drive, I'm not going to learn to drive by sitting next to another driver and observing them driving. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to learn to drive I'm going to go into that seat and make the mistakes that needs to be made and get corrected on my way. And the, teach, the, the driver is supposed to be playing a scaffolding role mm -hmm. where they're just guiding me. Oh, no, 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 no. You release that too quickly. Try right. it again and whatever. That's how we learn. Mm -hmm. And that's the way you learn that subject. And it, most of the time, that's not what happens. Right. I've seen books. On the shelves there, hundred mm -hmm. uh, percent. There is what pass rate. Yes, yeah, yeah, study. Yeah. If you buy this book yeah. and you read it, <laughs> mm. it's good, and it comes with all <laughs> sorts of fake examples, right. you are guaranteed success to pass. It's just sitting next to your father right. driving. <laughs> right, right. Wow, interesting.
discussion today. <laughs> Very interesting discussion. Um, this time we want to entertain maybe uh, one or two questions uh, from, from the audience, even from our online, uh, online uh, audience. If there are people who have sent through their, their, their questions on the comment sections, we might, have, might as well um, get to entertain them. One or two questions before we close the program. Yes, Mr. Tagure. You did say that the business owners as a way of manipulating the system somehow. Would you know of any way to manipulate media when the business owner was born? Are they only touching them? <laughs> well, you're asking about cheating, yeah. They, they, they. <laughs> I've, 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 I've been watching some videos. I think they, they, that's, they invest so much into that. If you only knew how many people are all over the place, the as you are playing there, there are mm. several cameras just mm. observing. Because especially with that roulette, it's one machine which people were cheating a lot. Because what they... Because the ball actually goes into a slot while it's still moving. So, they, 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 they obviously, the main trick is which was being used is you, you don't go alone because mm. the person controlling is one and he's got all these people playing. Thieves being thieves, they go with the, the necessary diversions so that he should be able to slot his slots into a position once the ball goes in, right. into the slot and the, then the controller there is distracted. But it's just cheating they will catch you. Mm. Uh, they are the owners of the machine, and they are not completely online. Maybe an online game or whatever. With the people now learning more about hacking and whatever, I'm sure a few people are finding their way through the system. But those things, they invest millions because they make billions of dollars. So the amount of money they are investing to make sure they are not hacked and whatever mm. is tremendous. It's tremendous. Thank you for that question. Uh, do we have another question from the audience? Um, normally, we see that was playing with the ocean. See, we normally hear from a lady and whatever. If this one loses, then maybe it's because of the uh, play in the country and plays, etc. How, how, how does that happen? Is that from a community or is that? Um, I'm not sure if I quite got that question. Um, I'll try and. Yeah, pro I think I think I can illustrate. You know, when we we play the the group stages, and then we 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 come third. You know, and now we're trying to see if number two loses to number one, and if we draw with number four, and then we end up getting on the second position. I think that's that's what she's trying to to illustrate. Yeah, yeah. we we can still play around around the same concept. Yeah, there is as long as there's a chance. Like I said, you say that it's zero. If it's mm. not zero or one, then you might find even these days, those group stages, people will put money <laughs> to say we are looking at there is a chance if this happens, then this, whether it's a gold difference issue, all these things are to chance. And as such, will be linked. As long as you mention the word chance, mm. you are already in that field. All right. One last question, um, or maybe, maybe two. But um, still, um, until the in something that they saw a shield or something like that, we have done the six chambers and they put one in it. Out of curiosity, the people in the movies are going to be in the, 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 the shot. <laughs> what, what's the probability of you know, someone actually shooting themselves? Would it be safe for someone to, to do something like that? That's just sound. I would play a game like that. <laughs> Because with six chambers, you are talking of one over six. That's a big number. The chance of, yes, you've got the five safe zones, five out of six being safe, but I think one over six is big. Uh, if, you, if To put your life on, um, maybe one out of one million, you could try that. Yes. <laughs> Not one out of six, that's yeah. big. Yeah. That can happen. You can yeah. die. Don't try it, uh, <laughs> of course. You can die. Another question. Um, uh, one last question from Mr. Maramba. I think he had raised your hand. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to find out, Mr. Ndolo, from the issue of the game. I'm not even, uh, I did it once. If you go there, 
for, let's say you're just going for entertainment and stuff, there's a chance that you win to the extent that you have got those groupiers, the ones that play, being changed over and over again. But if you go back tomorrow, you lose everything. What, 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 what happens there? Do they look at you and say, this guy looks rich, let's make him win today? so that you come over and over again. What happened here? Look, I think, Mr. Maramba, what, what I would, well, this is what I think personally. Uh, when you are playing for fun, let's say you were playing that machine, I don't think you will come with preconceived ideas of some theories as to, uh, I did this yesterday. You're just going to play yeah, randomly yeah. because you are, not, you are not coming with a formula. But for someone who has played before, is already, I, 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 I sometimes talk about, you, you look at, say, people playing maybe tossing a coin, for instance, we say the probability of a head or a tail showing is half. And we say it's random. If I throw a coin now, if I pick that coin and throw it again, the outcomes of the second throw are completely independent of what happened first time. But if you look at yourself, suppose you have thrown the coin and it, it showed a head. Right. If I ask you to make a guess next time, are you not going to start thinking about what you saw yes. before and say, maybe now it's supposed to go the other way? Right. Whereas in your first try, you, didn't, you just took a guess. Okay, I think I'm going to go for a head. Right. There's no idea behind it. But once something has happened, you are now saying, no, I had a tail last time. It's not going to come. And yet this is supposed to be a random act where you are starting a new experiment. You shouldn't even be thinking about what happened before. It should be just random. But... That's not what's going to happen in your mind. You are going to say, no, there was a head. I uh, think I can't go back for a head. There's no way a coin will go ahead yet. Yet it can go ahead. Yet. Right. It can even do it six times in a row. All right. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Um, this has been interesting. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mzondo, for joining me on, the, on, on this program uh, today. Um, and I'm sure we have learned uh, a lot of things, uh, even on our, onla I mean, our, our online audience, those that are, have joined us on our Facebook page. I'm sure you've learned one or two things. And um, you might be here, you know, today, and you might have joined us on our online uh, audience, I mean, online platform, and you are wondering, you know, uh, how much more can I get, uh, you know, this stuff? And how can I be assisted? How can I get help? How do I access this knowledge and stand my foot on it? How do I benefit from it? You know what? The first step for you to really stand your foot on this knowledge and every other you know, session that you have had before, including those that we're going to have in the future, is for you to accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. And having said that, I would want to lead you into, in, in, in prayer to receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior with the help of the, or our, our, our church um, you know, members here. Yeah? Let's just uh, help those that are online, even including uh, those that are here. Can you please, uh, you know, pray after me? Say, Father God, I thank you today for this beautiful time you have given me uh, to experience this session of uh, studio empowerment session. And Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you died on the cross and on the third day you were raised and today you are in heaven with God. And I give my life to you and I ask you to come into my heart. And I declare with my mouth that from today onwards I am a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, until we meet again, Tim Mutsikui, I'm out. Thank you.